Hi everyone, how are you guys doing on this Thursday afternoon? It is a new day and time for our little Homeschool Solutions Facebook Lives that we're doing. Um, we moved them here to Thursday afternoon at 2.45 to adjust with my new fall schedule that I have now. Let me start, because I don't think I did this last week, um, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Pam Barnhill. And I have three homeschooling podcasts. I blog at pambarnhill.com. Um, you can find my podcast, my blog post, and all of my other homeschooling resources on that website. I have the Homeschool Solution Show, which is the best homeschool content on the web, streaming straight to your earbuds every Friday. Got a great one coming up by Kara Anderson tomorrow, so you guys be on the lookout for that newsletter to hit your inbox tomorrow morning. Um, I also have the Your Morning Basket podcast, which is coming off of hiatus in just a couple of weeks, and we are starting out with a great show there. Cassie, you know, it's okay you don't have little ones because I bet you have some wisdom to share, so I'm going to let you share wisdom in the comments. So, yay, I'm glad you're here. And then also the Homeschool Snapshots podcast, where I interview homeschooling moms about their days, their triumphs, their trials and everything in between, and that was also coming off of hiatus later this month. So, yes, Tamara, thank you. You know, I go, I went to the hair, I do not do this myself. <laughs> that takes too much time and effort, which I just do not do. So, um, every six weeks or so, I go to the hairdresser, and he does it for me. Um, he likes to do it so he can see if he's cut my hair properly. And uh, as long as it stops raining, It'll stay like this for a few days. It's lovely, but you know, and then it's gone again. And I'll be back curly headed next week. So yay, but thank you so much. And Dawn's here. That means she's got links for us. So um, there you go. I'm just refreshing my page to make sure I don't lose you guys. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And Jessica's here and she has two littles ages five and six. So hopefully this is gonna be uh, something that's helpful for her and a lot of other people as well. So, okay, let me catch you up on, because I know a lot of you guys were uh, were watching last week or watched the replay. Things have been so much better. <laughs> we had a horrible first day of school last week, and that basically was the dominant topic of my Facebook Live last week. And uh, it's been so much better since then. It's really, really gotten a lot better. So, um, not perfect. I still have some complaints, but you know, they're kids and that's what they're going to do. Hi, Vanessa. Welcome. And, um, so it's been going a lot better. And then Saturday, so we started school Wednesday and then Saturday I got sick and the boys had had kind of like you could tell that they were like stuffed up and had colds. Well, I got sick Saturday and then it hit me. I felt just so bad Saturday and Sunday, and I was sitting there thinking, if the boys felt like this on Wednesday, no wonder we had such a bad day. And they never say, oh, mom, I'm, I think I'm getting sick. I'm feeling really bad. They just like act out, you know? And so um, I really think that that probably had a, a big part to do with our bad day on Monday, was they just felt horrible, and they didn't know how to tell me, you know, I'm, I'm getting sick. You know, so they couldn't self-diagnose. But anyway, but it's been so much better since then. Still crazy, still crazy. Don't get me wrong, getting used to like all the new stuff we're doing, but um, but so much better. So let's talk about, good for you, Tamara. I am so glad. And thank you everybody on the hair. I really appreciate it. It'll be back to normal next week, but uh, thank you so very much. Um, we're gonna talk about little kids today and I have a whole index card full of notes, so I'm gonna try not to like go too long. Uh, but I'm kind of passionate about this subject and so, um, <clears throat> you know, just rein me in, Dawn, if you need, if you need to. So, um, we're gonna start with two and three year olds. What do you do when you have two and three year olds? Now keep in mind that if you have two, I'm not talking about today, the conversation is not about what you do with the toddlers that are like wrecking havoc on your homeschool when you're trying to teach everybody else. That's not what this is about. This is about what do you do when you teach these kids? And so a lot of you mamas who have been in this spot and are further along on the journey, you're gonna, you're gonna know when I start talking to you that I'm really not talking to you. 
Um, so please drop in some uh, any of your best tips and hints in the in the uh, the comments down below. But I am talking to the mamas who have little kids, like six and under, right now, and that's your oldest child. And you're thinking, what is it that I should be doing with these kids? And so let's talk to the mamas who maybe have two and three year olds. And I know how you're feeling. So many of you are probably just itching to begin. And you're like, what do I do? All of my friends have sent their kids off to homeschool. My husband, you know, he might even be questioning why in the world I'm not sending this kid off to, to preschool. Um, preschool is what I mean. I think I said homeschool. Everybody sent their kids off to preschool. Your mom is looking at you like you're crazy for not sending your kid off to preschool. You're so excited about getting started. You want to do something. You see all the cute ideas online. And even if you're not normally a cute idea person, you're thinking maybe you should be or maybe you have to be to do preschool at home. And so I'm here to tell you today, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do it. Um, now, if you like those kinds of things, do it. Does your child need it? No. Your child absolutely does not need it. And I think this is one of those things where you kind of sometimes have to come to the realization yourself, but I'm just going to throw it out there for you. So if you have a two and three year old, here are some things that I think you ought to be doing. And Dawn Garrett, who is my cohort here, Tristan is throwing some great advice down there in the comments right now. Yes, ma'am. But um, Dawn wrote a great post called, So You Think You Want to Homeschool? And she's going to drop the link to that. And it is absolutely perfect as for what should you be doing if you have a two and three year old and you are so anxious and so excited to get started. So first of all, just to maybe feed some of this need that you have, you know you're gonna homeschool and you wanna feed this need, you can start reading some books. And some books that I would recommend that you start with are For the Children's Sake by Susan Schaefer Macaulay. That would be a great place to start. Also, the very new book, Mere Motherhood by Cindy Rollins. It's a memoir, it's not a how-to book, but I think you will gain such valuable insights from that book. And you can find that one at meremotherhood.com. Dawn's gonna start drinking, uh, dropping some links for us. Another really good book that you can read if you have very young children, you know you wanna homeschool, and you're like, I wanna study ahead, you could read Educating the Wholehearted Child by um, Sally and Clay Clarkson. Now, I want to point out, I love that book. It's, it's, it's very good for type A personalities. Non-type A personalities might get a little overwhelmed by it, but type A personalities are gonna absolutely love it. So read that book. They've got just this wonderful pairing of inspirational stuff about a literature-based homeschool and also really practical, step-by-step, hands-on things as well. So those are three books that you could start reading when your child is two to three years old and you're just dying to get started with, you know, what can I do to prepare myself? This is what you can do. So that's the first thing. The second thing you really should be doing, and if I could go back and do it all over again, this is what I would be doing. I would be continuing my own education. I would be getting ready for these later years, and I would be doing that by reading good books, reading novels, read Jane Austen, read Wendell Berry, read Charles Dickens, uh, and then you can get into some of the harder stuff if you want to. Read Shakespeare, but read those kinds of things and fill your own cup, fill yourself up with beautiful language, and get yourself prepared to be able to go back later and, uh, and, and kind of impart this knowledge to your, your children. You're not gonna have that time later, so do it now. Um, while your children are little, poems are a very good uh, place to start as well. Read lots of poetry and kind of work on your own education. So those are some things mama can read. And then the, what can you do specifically with your children? So with your children, you're going to work, wanna work on habit training. Um, you're going to want that little two and three year old to be helpful and to be obedient and to have a few little chores that they do that make them feel important every day. Slow down what you're doing. Instead of taking and spending three hours of your day doing preschool, 
Take that extra time instead and slow down everything else you're doing in your life and include them with you. Let them help you with the sweeping. Let them help you with the cooking. Let them crawl up in your lap and talk about things. You don't need to teach them colors. You don't need to teach them days of the week. You don't need to do anything like that. You just need to talk about those things. Today is Monday. We're going to go see Grandma on Wednesday. That's two days from now. So tomorrow's Tuesday and the next day's Wednesday. And then we're going to go see Grandma. And if you do that enough, if you give them enough things to look forward to, they're going to get all of that stuff without having to have a calendar time. Um, you know, talk about the colors, talk about the letters as you see them. You're going, you know, you're going to the grocery store. Look, it's a big P for Publix. P, -p, -p says Publix. That's the kind of stuff you do and you never have to sit down and do a worksheet of any kind whatsoever with your two to three year old. So live your life and then read to them lots and lots and lots of appropriate picture books. Um, your two and three year old does not need novels. They don't even need things like My Father's Dragon or Charlotte's Web or Winnie the Pooh, which honestly, you don't start getting the humor in Winnie the Pooh typically until you're eight or nine years old at least. So um, read to them picture books and enjoy those picture books. And if you want something gentle to do with them, I highly recommend before five in a row. Um, but before five in a row, as it's written in the book, not the 50 bazillion other things that people add to it online. And I had a great conversation with uh, Jane Lambert, the creator of Before Five in a Row and Five in a Row, which I'm gonna talk about in just a few minutes on one of the podcasts. And um, Dawn is gonna drop the link for you there on one of the Homeschool Snapshots podcasts. So do five in a row, don't, yes Meg, thank you. Don't Pinterest before five in a row. Just do it like it's written in the book and that it will, it will be wonderful. So that's your two and, two and three year old. So now let's kind of move on to your four year old. What can you do uh, with your four year old? And I would suggest this is a point where if you've started before five, five in a row, you would continue it. You would definitely continue reading, 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 reading picture books to these children. Um, so lots and lots of picture books, lots of as much reading as they will sit and tolerate or as much reading as they will move around the room and tolerate, play with Legos and tolerate, play with baby dolls and tolerate, color and coloring books are just on blank white paper and tolerate. They're doing all of that stuff and you're reading to them and you're giving them the best education. Um, then as we get a little closer, maybe a little further along into the, the fourth, the four year old year, if you would like to start something else, I do have some recommendations for you. One of the things we used and loved uh, was all about reading pre-level. And I used this with my last one um, because I didn't find it until him. I wish I'd had it to use with all my kids. Basically all about reading pre-level. We love it. We love the Ziggy puppet. He's seven. He still loves Ziggy. I still have to pull that darn puppet out and use it every once in a while or he gets all sullen and upset with me. Um, and there's a Ziggy voice that I have to do that goes with it. You know, I've just created a monster. But he absolutely loves Ziggy and a lot of times Ziggy will motivate him to do things. So, um, all about reading pre-level goes through the alphabet three times. First, you learn the lowercase letter of the alphabet. You learn what it looks like and you learn the name. Secondly, no, the uppercase comes first. And then you learn the lowercase, what it looks like in the name. And then finally, you go back through it one final time and you learn the uh, first sound of each letter. And so uh, it's a lot of repetition. It's very gentle. It's very easy. There's some suggested things in there we just totally did not do. Like a lot of times they suggest, oh, you know, take cotton balls and put it on the page and make clouds. And you know, if I had cotton balls laying there, I might pick them up and do it. If not, we just colored clouds on the page. So it's very flexible and adaptable to what you like to do. So that's my favorite little pre-reading program to do with kids and I would start it probably about age four. Um, Preschool Math at Home by Kate Snow is a really good book for this age group and um, she talks you through and walks you through different activities to do with their 
with your, your preschooler to build their mathematical understanding. Kate Snow was a guest on the Your Morning Basket podcast, and you can also um, get that book on Amazon. Um, Dawn's going to drop the link for you for that one. So preschool math at home would be something really good to do. I did not do that with my kids because it came too late for me. But if I had it to go back and do over again, that is what I would be using. And then continue working on those habits that you've been working on as well in your children. You know, pick up everything because they're now four. You know, take it a little notch higher and, and work on that obedience and those really good habits. So that's age four. Now, along about this age is a really great time to start a morning time because if you have a four-year-old as your oldest, you probably have a two-year-old or a one-year-old or something like that um, tagging along behind, which is great. And morning time is a very good thing to introduce when your kids are this age. In fact, Cindy Rollins started morning time with her kids uh, when her oldest was four years old about 28, 29 years ago. And so I actually did a podcast with Celeste from Joyous Lessons, and um, we talked all about how to do morning time when all of your kids are like six and under. So Dawn is going to drop the link for that one for you there. And basically, Celeste would start um, when they were at breakfast. And so that's a wonderful time to start a morning time. And then I have a post called Morning Time for All Ages where I have some really good suggestions on what to do with your kids. And the most important thing is to keep it age appropriate. You don't want your morning time for your six and under crowd to look like the morning time the mama down the street is doing for her nine, 10, 11 year olds. You don't wanna be memorizing the Nicene Creed. You don't wanna be memorizing the speech from Henry IV. You don't want to be singing um, these big long hymns, you know, Children's songs are fine. Nursery rhymes are great. Um, if you're going to do hymns, do the ones that they're most familiar with and singing in church often. Um, just a little bit from a children's story Bible, some picture books, marching around the room and singing, finger plays, those kinds of things are all perfect for a little kid morning time. And that's the time that you want to start building that habit, starting your day with prayer. Oh, um... I think it's called Lessons for Little Ones. Is his name Davis? Don, I didn't send you this link. Uh, but it's an ABC book. It's like a little devotional for little bitty kids. Tamara, yes, my book house, the In the Nursery and the book two as well, which of course I can't remember the name of right now. Those are both great for that uh, little bitty age group. I'm gonna get to that, Jessica. Um, and this is a great place, so let me stop and talk about this. What if you have all age children, Jessica's asking, 16, 14, 12, 6, and 5? Um, well, <laughs> my little guy, he didn't get as much little guy stuff as the big guys did when they were little. He really just started tagging along. So he would sit, thank you, Sarah, up one pair of stairs. He would sit in on our morning time for as long as he could tolerate, and then I would just kind of shoo him off and let him go. So he would get what he could, and then when he got to be, I didn't do anything with him when he was four. Not a darn thing. I just tried to keep him out of our hair. So he basically got in on morning time and reading aloud time as much as he could tolerate, and then uh, off he went. And, and that was fine. And... Um, and then once he got to be five, we started doing five-year-old stuff. And so, yeah, he's just around, he's absorbing, he's out of the room, he's hopefully not killing himself. I was looking in on him, and then he would come back and just kind of tag along. That's exactly right, but I did nothing special for him because I didn't feel like I had the time to do anything special for him. And so, you know, I, I know a, mom, a lot of mamas have regret about that and they look back. Um, I'm just not gonna have that regret. He's doing fine. He loves us all, we love him. Um, and sometimes he stayed in the room and sometimes he didn't and I'm just not gonna have any regrets over it. I will say my friend Jessica, um, and, and Misty Winkler does this as well, where she had a story time right there for her um, little kids. And so she would do morning time with everybody and then she would take her little kids and she would do a, probably about 30 minutes of reading. And my friend Jessica will do this too where she'll just sit with the little kids and read a couple of picture books to them 
and then uh, kind of send them off. And then, um, you know, that was kind of their part of the day. My kids were still close enough in age that I felt like mine got enough reading aloud at other times, but a lot of times he will. He'll bring a picture book to me. He did it before bedtime last night. I had read from the new Ember Falls uh, for the family kind of read aloud before bedtime, and then he brought me a picture book at my bedtime and said, Mama, will you read this one to me? And so, yeah, sometimes I need that reminder from him that he still needs picture books. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're moving into five years old. This is where, as they're finishing up that All About Re Reading pre-level, you can start moving into All About Reading Level 1. Don't rush through it. Take your time with it. Um, you know, don't feel like it's a race. Don't feel like you've got to finish it in one year. Five years old is still pretty young. And if your child isn't ready, back off and just read books to them. But um, All About Reading Level 1 is appropriate for a five-year-old, especially as they start getting a little older. Vine is six going on seven now and we're still in all about reading level one. We started a little later and I was fine to do that. He did not start all about reading level one until he was six years old and I'm okay with that. He's not behind. You know, he's just, he's, he's doing great with it and sometimes I think he's doing so much better with it than my other two did because he was just a little older when he started. So there you go. Um, Math you see Alpha is one of our favorite curriculums for this age group. Um, another thing that you might look at would be uh, Singapore Early Bird Math. That would be a really good one. I will say that if you are starting with a five-year-old and you're looking at Singapore Kindergarten Math A, it's a little on the young side. So when John was uh, kindergarten age, when he was five, we just didn't even do the A book. We just right, went right into the B book. But um, Matthew C. Alpha is what I'm using with Thomas, and, and he is doing very well with that, and we started that when he was five. Um, we didn't finish it. We just started it when he was five. And so this is kind of, um, well, and then my other recommendation, what we like to use, I've heard a lot of great things about handwriting without tears, but what we use is printing with letter stories from IEW. And so there are these cute little letter stories and they start off, you tell the little letter story to the child. So C is the happy letter um, and um, it's happy because it has a, is a cookie with a bite taken out of it and it says K -k -k for cookie. And so you tell the little story and you start at two o'clock and you show them how to make the C and when they first start making it, they make it in little one inch boxes on the page. And then it's not until they've learned to form all of the lowercase letters in these one inch boxes that you move it to lines. So you first start by learning to form the letter in boxes and we actually start on a whiteboard, a lap size whiteboard. And they learn all these letter stories. They start you with C, which starts at two o'clock and then you learn O, two o'clock all the way around, A, two o'clock all the way around, a ponytail, um, G, two o'clock, you see how this works? And so it's very systematic in how they introduce these letters and it makes a lot of sense to the child that they're just adding on to these letters as they're learning to form them. So I really love the printing with letter stories programs and I've used that with both of my boys. So for a five-year-old, you want to do this most days. And what I mean by this is if you get to a child who is resistant, I don't see any reason to fight a five-year-old and make them keep going, okay? Just most days. <laughs> um, so, if they, you know, if they decide one day that they're just not in the mood to do it, just let it go. Let it go, do something else. Read them a few books, check off the kindergarten box for the day, call it good, and that's all you need to do. But don't fight your five-year-old to sit down and do school every single day. Do it most days. And then if they're not in the mood, read to them while they play and just check it off and call it good. Go into the kitchen and cook cookies. There you go. You've done something really good for that day. All right, so now let's move on to six-year-olds. Basically for the six-year-olds, they're continuing what they were doing as a five-year-old. For us, if they finish All About Reading Level 1, we move up. If they finish Matthew C. Alpha, they move up. 
if they um, you know finish printing with letter stories we start writing words and uh, sentences instead of just you know we start practicing those the little handwriting and doing little bits of copy work um, for the six-year-old you're gonna want to do it more days so for the five-year-old you do it most days for the six-year-old you do it more days and that's where I really kind of start encouraging them to be consistent even on the days that they don't want to and a lot of six-year-olds don't want to and a lot of six-year-old boys really don't want to especially if they have younger siblings around but this is where I try to like really say okay this is serious this is your job this is your business this is what you're doing it takes us less than an hour to do well less than an hour to do your three subjects here uh, math reading and handwriting and so we're gonna sit down and do it today I actually broke out the chocolate chips um, I had a six-year-old who was fighting me who was dragging his feet who didn't want to get stuff done and so I just laid the chocolate chip down by the math problem he went over there and he reached and he was gonna grab it stick it in his mouth and I said uh -uh -uh, you answer the problem first so he wrote down the answer chocolate chip in his mouth another chocolate chip by the next problem and so it took me about 15 chocolate chips to get him through the day but um, we got through it in record time he was happy I was happy everybody was happy school got done for the day I'm not above a little bribery all right so the last thing I want to mention for um, before we take questions because we've been doing this a while now is um, Charlotte Mason's uh, list of formidable attainments for a six-year-old this list is uh, something that you could use if you are wanting somebody was asking earlier about a kindergarten curriculum they want a box I'm just gonna like encourage you to skip the box because if you get the box I think the box comes with a lot of stuff that you just don't need um, and so and, and it, I sometimes the box puts pressure on us to finish everything that's in the box so I would rather see you go out and pull a few of these programs that either I've talked about or people have left as comments that they've loved in the uh, comments below and not go out and get a box. Um, but the CM list, yes Meg, uh, boxes make it hard to rabbit trail and this is an important point that you want to be able to rabbit trail with your five-year-old and six-year-old because you want them to love learning and so they if they get really excited about something take the time to rabbit trail with them um, but if you are wanting a little more guidance this formidable list of attainments for a child of six is a place that you can go now I will tell you it is a formidable list of attainments and Don Garrett and I had this conversation the other day Don how old is your oldest and you're still working on this list like 11 12 and you're still working on the list so don't feel like you've got to accomplish all of this before six because it is a formidable list but it gives you something to work towards um, if you're wanting a little bit of guidance they need to learn to do math they need to learn to read they need to learn to write and then they you know the things on this list um, is a really good place to start so um, questions do you have questions about anything and yes um, there is another list for 12 year olds and it's formidable indeed so I need to pull that six-year-old list back up and look at it and let's start working towards it because I know we don't know I know we haven't done all of it though we've probably gotten a lot closer over the past few years um, than we were before so anybody have any questions before I sign off because we've been on here a long time talking about little kids I hope it's been helpful to you and um, the links are a gold mine the comments are uh, a gold mine down here what age are you introducing cursive I wish I had done cursive first and I did not um, and then so one of my little guys my littlest guy he's in co-op with all of these kids who are doing uh, a spell to read and write or something like that and they do cursive first so all the kids in his class can write cursive except for him so I actually ended up I introduced cursive in second grade with my daughter because she was really keen on it and really wanted to do it and I used logic of English cursive with her and then um, 
my middle son had he's just not great fine motor wise i wish i'd started cursive with him but i didn't want to like throw it in with him when i was wanting to cement the printing so um he is going into fourth grade this year and i got uh new american cursive from memoria press to use with him he's probably like at the top age bracket for the meerkat but i think he'll like it and then um the little guy, since he really wanted to use cursive, I just went ahead and got the new American cursive. I got them both a book. And uh, we, we haven't started yet. Probably about a month in, I'm going to start with both of them and see how that cursive goes. So one's in fourth grade and one's in first grade. Um, and then I started my daughter in second grade. So really kind of like all over the map with the cursive. It depends on the child. There's my answer. Um... All right, favorite programs for nature study. Dawn, what is it exploring nature with children? The one, the nice lady who does the, uh, oh, Lynn, I think is her name, and I'm probably getting this wrong. Um, we can drop the link for you for the nature study. Uh, that one is a good one because it goes all around the year, and then Cindy West at Shining Dawn Books has other nature study. Those are a little thicker and more in depth uh, if you're really wanting to dig into some nature study. And she has books and poetry recommendations, all kinds of great things in those. And she has a preschool nature study book too, if you have little ones. So, um, see, I'm trying to scroll through and see if I missed any questions. Oh, good, so New American Cursive, you're liking that one, Kelly. Continuing with five in a row when they are five and six. Yes, if I didn't say that, I meant to. Um, I did not because we moved on to, well, no, I did. I, we stopped five in a row when my oldest was six. I didn't do it with my little guy. Totally, I think five in a row was wonderful for five and six-year-olds. Do it like it's written in the guide. Don't feel like you've got to Pinterest it and add all of that other stuff. Um, it, you know, if your personality can look online and add one or two things, do it. If your personality looks online and starts feeling really guilty that you're not doing all that other stuff that other mama's doing, stay off of online and just use the manual. The manual is enough. So, does the book allow for boys who do not have a lot of motor skills? Which book is that? Would that be uh, the cursive book we were talking about or... Um, or what's that? Oh. High school. Okay. <clears throat> My oldest is 11. <laughs> so, uh, Dawn and I had a long conversation about this because I'm like, Dawn, I can't talk about high school. But I do have two qualifications. One, I used to teach high school. And two, I just helped put together the high school program for our co-op. So, Jessica, I will be talking about high school next week. I will be throwing a lot of resources at you for you to go look at for other people's expertise, but I will share some things next week and I'll give you some resources. So, um, all right, yeah, and Dawn is just dropping all the really great links down here as well. So, any other questions that you have, put them down here. Dawn and I will be back. And um, Tristan, see, this is where I need to be able to like have you come on with me and we could both talk about high school together. Um, I could interview you about high school. It would be great. But, um, but yeah, so come back next week. We're going to talk about high school, 2.45 on Thursday afternoon, Central Time. That's our new time. And any other questions that you have after this one, we'll grab down in the comments and help you out down there. So you guys have an awesome Thursday. Mom's night out tonight, going to celebrate my mother's birthday. And um, I will catch you next week. So have fun.